Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand Forex Technical Analysis. If you're new, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back. Um, just want to say that the video is also time stamped so uh, you can go to your favorite pairs or you can watch the whole video and uh, if you like the content please like subscribe and share and you can also check out some more content on the YouTube channel which is uh, you know I've got a uh, lots of uh, videos and uh, you know uh, lengthy videos as well courses on fundamental analysis supply and demand etc um, and some previous past you know trade setups as well as um, the latest one which is forex market manipulation liquidity and slippage interest rates and trade setups right which is um, quite an interesting video um, I've got some uh, um, some some uh, information in that that is uh, well worth watching so uh, definitely have a view of that and uh, don't also uh, forget or uh, remember that you have the free fundamental analysis course which is again absolutely free um, link is in the description box below where I talk about fundamentals and really how to you know derive value right beyond looking at a price chart all right, so um, let's get into the technicals for this week and we start off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index and uh, <clears throat> this week has been a bit of a topsy-turvy week for the uh, for the dollar. I um, was expecting some sort of pullback, markets don't move up forever. Um, you know, supply and demand zones are just uh, areas on a price chart where there are, you know, there is potential value. There was value in the past and it could be potential value in the future. So, I mean, I was, uh, I'm a buyer of the dollar personally. So I was waiting for some sort of pullback, however it came, it came, uh, whether it's in a large, you know, engulfing candle like this. Um, or it's you know two three four candles uh you know down or if it's just you know lower highs lower lows um you know i was waiting for prices to come down to certain levels then watching for price waiting for price to react um to those levels and then uh you know see uh, if there's any buying opportunities so um with that being said, um, there was an opportunity to short the dollar, not necessarily on the Dow Jones dollar index. I don't really trade this, uh, um, the index, as it's just a measure of dollar strength overall against the major currencies. Um, there would have been, uh, you know, some sell opportunities if you saw this selling off, you know, potentially on the on the daily or intraday time frames. Then you would look at any of the, uh, you know, forex currency pairs you know, uh, dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD, etc. right, and look for selling opportunities there. But if you're looking at buying value, um, then uh, like I am, then I wouldn't necessarily be uh, trying to short the dollar. But again, this is not financial advice. Um, so dollars sold off um, and we kind of, you know, broke past these two demand zones we were buying up into pretty much high area anyway i prefer looking at um you know this move higher and then i'm uh, waiting for at least a, a fair value pullback and pretty much fair value is 50 percent of the low to the high right so if i uh get this tool and uh put it from there to there for measuring that's an absolute bargain so that's absolute expensive which i think it is expensive you know, now we're at, you know, pretty much fair value. So looking at, you know, dollar overall strength or weakness, we've got some, uh, you know, some bullishness coming into the market. So um, looking at buying opportunities on any of the other, um, you know, uh, dollar related crosses, right? And again, it's not financial advice, um, you know, definitely do your own research, but you'll understand if you take the fundamental analysis course um, free, um, that you really should be uh, buying the dollar and really just waiting on pullbacks, trying to uh, time um, counter what traders would consider counter trend or uh, you know fade the uh, the strength from profit taking isn't the highest probability trade you can take. Even though yes, you could look back on a technical price chart and uh, say it worked there and it worked here and you know do your back testing, but you know you really want to um, add extra edges. Um, outside of just technical analysis. So um, this week, 
Uh, we do have the midterms on Tuesday, right? Midterm elections on Tuesday. So again, um, that could potentially affect the dollar um, from a sentiment, you know, perspective, uh, or it could even, you know, increase the strength of the dollar. But, um, you know, you can do one of, uh, you know, three things. You can uh, enter your trades as normal, right? So normal positions, you can half your positions or you can just sit out until the midterms are over right we did have some good news um some better than expected news regarding gdp i think it was on friday um no sorry it was uh non-farms talking about gdp it was uh non-farm um um you know employment came out much better than expected average hourly earnings was uh you know in line with expectations as well but it was generally positive for the dollar but again we could get some weak sentiment before potentially uh you know um going higher again if it does go higher and um again it's probably more sentiment based this week on the uh, dollar depending on what happens with the midterms but fundamentally we should be uh you know uh, say we but um i'm uh buying the dollar right um just waiting for pullbacks if this trade doesn't work out you know or this area doesn't work out just wait for you know a lower area in order to get long again so with that in mind if you are looking to short the dollar again, you'd have to wait for price to come all the way back up into this supply zone before looking to get short, right? And what we can do as well on the Dow Jones dollar index is uh, be a bit more specific now that we've created this um, larger, um, what is small, more specific supply zone, right? So that would really be the area before looking to get short. And again, if I go back to the YouTube channel, you can understand why and how I draw my uh, uh, technical analysis candlestick zones on this uh, video right here, how to draw supply and demand zones. So um, going back to the charts and we're gonna move on to the dollar yen. And the dollar yen uh, we have um, from last week, we did have some supply zones but as I mentioned, depends on whether uh, risk sentiment was on or off, right? So we pretty much came down, bounced off of this. This was, I think, um, that was on Friday this happened. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, into Friday, we've, uh, you know, made our way higher. And how we use these daily demand zones is really to uh, enter on uh, lower time frames. You can enter on the daily as well, but we'd go down into maybe a four hour time frame chart and then when prices come down into this demand zone, then you'd be looking for, you know, a potential entry, right? Um, going back into back to the daily time frame chart, so we have seen, you know, this occur. We've created higher, higher, higher low. So this again becomes a level of demand, right? And then if we're looking for any buy trades, this area is going to be the first area to look to potentially get long if we're looking to get short then we're looking at this uh, area right here this uh, supply zone before looking to get short moving on to the dollar swiss dollar swiss franc uh we've broken through that demand zone right here so um we've uh, come really into this long-term supply zone which we've reacted off of it's just from really from last year. If I really want to pull that slightly higher. Right, and then we've got one bit further up. So we reacted, but we also did react to, and this occurred on the uh, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? We did create a demand zone. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this up really to here. So uh, Monday, so if we make a higher high, then this would create the, uh, the, uh, the demand zone. Um, and again, for some of you that have uh, watched the uh, free YouTube video, you'll understand exactly why. And uh, you can see where prices have reacted. Again, going off the lower time frame chart, you can see what is happened and what happened here. But again, just keep in mind the midterms. Again, look at where you're actually buying in the uh, overall move up. You're still buying into really the highs of the market. Yes, we are at you know, pretty much parity. Um, but uh, if I'm looking to buy, didn't get involved in this trade, I probably want price to come down a bit further, preferably down here. But 
there's an entry here then I'll be getting in long if you're looking to buy the Swiss franc over the US dollar or maybe some risk sentiment right then you'd be probably waiting for prices to come up into this area that'd be some sort of double top formation and then look for a sell going on to the dollar CAD dollar CAD um, this chart uh, we did have a demand zone here as we created higher highs higher lows prices did come down into this area before looking to again um, you know react positively and again if you're looking to buy also we'll say buy the Canadian dollar um, anywhere within this zone in this supply zone this is where you'd be looking to get short if you're looking to buy now um, but again potentially decent area but again just be wary of the um, the midterms that are, that are happening again if you're unsure best thing to do is just to uh, you know sit on your hands and uh, you know watch the market play out watch the results and look at them happen and then you can reevaluate your uh, your position or just enter maybe a half position if you're not too sure um, what we also need to do is to look potentially at any of these uh, demand zones for uh, um, uh, a buy opportunity right so you'd be looking for a buy opportunity anywhere around here um, New Zealand dollar US dollar interestingly we've broken through these uh, supply zones right we put in this pin bar so right now could be a potential opportunity to get short um, if we're looking to get long then this is going to be really where your demand zone is so prices do pull back into this area this is where you'd be looking to potentially get long right and uh, um, yeah pretty much that's, a, that's it for this week again we could see prices you know take out you know these highs depending on what happens in the midterms right so there would be your next level to try and get short and he'll be your next level to potentially get short as well and moving on to the pound dollar so the pound dollar I'm actually short on this uh, on this currency pair and um, I'll also show you exactly uh, why um, using the uh, you know supply and demand technical analysis basics as well right and you can apply this to pretty much all of the uh, previous currencies that I've uh, spoken about as well as uh, the upcoming currency pairs that I'm about to review regarding supply and demand zones and if you want to know more much more about this again just go to the uh, YouTube channel if you scroll down it's actually uh, this video here the supply and demand order flow equation you know in a nutshell what I'm um, explaining is uh, why there should be more demand than supply or more supply than demand at certain areas right from a technical analysis um, perspective and what I use is um, horizontal support and resistance right um, diagonal support and resistance and dynamic support and resistance so um, I'm gonna just gonna break down this trade and uh, why I, you know, potentially got short. I say potentially, I did get short on this uh, this currency pair, right? So what you've got is first of all a level of support and resistance. So um, we've got a level of supply which is value first of all, right? Then we've got. Um, uh, horizontal support and resistance and so why is this important with uh, an area of value and it's simply because there's going to be traders looking at a level like this right where you've had support support resistance bit of support around here bit of resistance support support as well now potential term resistance so not only do you have value traders supply and demand traders like me entering you're going to have traders that trade support and resistance entering around here and if they're entering short then that's supply then uh you have diagonal support and resistance now this doesn't have any diagonal support and resistance confluence in this trade right but if you did and you saw you know uh some sort of um trend line for example let me uh get the tool let's say for example there was a an obvious trend line 
right, or diagonal resistance that did line up within this zone, which does occur from time to time, then you would have those types of traders entering short as well, and that would be supply, right? Then you've got dynamic support and resistance, and dynamic support and resistance is pretty much just moving averages, 2150, 100, and 200 EMAs and SMAs, right? So you would look to see if you would see any dynamic support and resistance. We do, we get the, the green line is the 100 um, EMA or SMA. Can't remember which one it is, whether it's the lighter or the darker one, doesn't really matter. Um, but you can see there's some resistance there, right? From a dynamic support and resistance. I don't use trend lines to tell me which way to trade. I use fundamentals, but I know that traders will trade these uh, moving averages and moving average bounces, right? And again, um, if you watch the uh, supply and demand order equation, you know, YouTube video, you'll see exactly, you know, why and how I enter, right? Or use these as confluence. And then you also have the 21 and the 50, right? So even if traders don't trade the 100 and the 200, you can start to see that you've got the 21 and the 50 all around here as confluence, right? So we know we've got value, right? We've got, um, you know, new traders entering on moving average uh, resistance or dynamic support and resistance as I like to uh, refer uh, that to, right? So we've got two out of the three, right? Plus supply. So net net, there should be, from a technical perspective, more supply than demand here. Now, will this trade work out? I have no idea. Again, we've got midterms going on and, uh, you know, sentiment and fundamentals really, you know, um, trump the uh, 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 the price action and what you see on a price chart, right? But if this does go in my direction, right, and do a bit more analysis on this, um, if you've noticed, we're actually in a bit of a range as well, right? So from the low to the high, and if you change this to value range, right? This is the range from this low to this high. Prices are really contained between here and here, right? So we are right now fair value. So this is the first decent area that I wanna get involved in from a short in perspective, right? So um, that's the reason why I am short on this currency pair. I wanna be a buyer of the dollar, you know, pound got Brexit going on um, and some uh, and some other things going on as well. So uh, sentiment wise, it shouldn't be, you know, um, buying the pound isn't necessarily the, the smartest thing to do, um, even though traders will go and do it and take advantage of maybe some short term sentiment. But until Brexit is really sorted out, um, I, I personally wouldn't. I'm not really going to be buying the, uh, the pound anytime soon. So um, that's my reason for getting in short. Um, if you are um, looking to get in short, then pretty much now is a decent time. If it depends on whether you know this or uh, anything on a lower time frame is an entry for you. You know, you can see on the eight hour, you've got a bit of a pin bar here. So um, again, uh, not telling you exactly how to enter or what your trigger you know should be, but um, you know, looking at this, it's uh, if you trade the eight hour and that's your entry, then. Uh, you know, you're slightly, maybe missed it slightly, but um, don't necessarily chase the market either. But, um, you know, if it pulls back, then you may want to, you know, potentially get short. So um, if you're looking to get long in this currency pair, then obviously nearest demand zone at the moment, and it's kind of created a new one. So it's going to be from there to there. Demand and get rid of this for now and clear that and what I'll do is I'll bring this also down to about here and I'll uh, I'll delete that for now so that doesn't necessarily confuse the charts so um, yeah you're waiting for prices really to come all the way back down to uh, the lower this range here before looking to get long if you're looking to get uh, long on the uh, pound. If this trade doesn't work out, then I'll probably be taking another short somewhere around here or here. So, um, moving on to the pound yen. The pound yen this week did bounce off of this uh, this uh, demand zone right here, and now we're up into you know the uh, 
uh, this this supply zone here and again just applying the supply and demand equation you can start to see if you want to be a buyer of the Japanese yen then now is a decent time as you've had you know some decent support and resistance within that level of uh, supply right so you've got support there bit of support support resistance reacted there bit of support bit of support resistance to the underside and prices right there so not a bad uh, setup as well you've probably got some di um, diagonal resistance there as well if you join the tops of those wicks um, and let's see if you've got any moving averages let's see you've got the 100 I think it might be just above yeah we've got the 200 uh, EMA and SMA it's reacting off of so yeah decent area and if risk if risk off starts to occur meaning the Japanese yen will strengthen in that environment then this is a uh, this is a decent trade to the downside right and again negative sentiment with the uh, British pound decent trade to the short side um, so let's go to euro dollar everybody's favorite pair so euro dollar reacted again on Friday you know with uh, non-farm news and uh, um, you know reacted with this uh, kind of like engulfing type candle um, there are probably a lot of traders getting long you know by the end of the day on this thinking that this was gonna you know go higher and it might do go higher as well right it just might go higher um, but now maybe sentiment has changed so uh, don't be surprised if you do see uh, prices continue on its way down right um, I do want to get you know short on this pair but this uh, move didn't happen within this supply zone here so unfortunately I couldn't get uh, short on this currency pair well I'll just wait for the you know the, the supply zone to be created and then I'll just wait for you know pullbacks as I know that this would be potential value because I have no idea just because you see it's, it's this kind of pin bar here doesn't mean you should be taking it right always uh, ask yourself why that pin bar actually occurred now we know that this occurred due to non farms so it's a decent short but is it necessarily the best place to buy area wise nope and that's because we trade supply and demand zones and it didn't come up into that area of supply um, from a demand perspective is there demand for the euro you know maybe maybe not but if you are looking to be a buyer then any kind of pullback into you know the lows of this area here right would be a decent buy from a technical perspective euro yen uh euro yen didn't quite come down into here but there is some demand we've created higher highs and higher lows so we've got that move there that move there and a move higher so this now becomes an area of demand decent area of demand so if you do want to be a buyer of the euro you're waiting for prices to come back down into this area here before looking to get long if you're looking to get short again just apply the uh, um, the supply and demand um, order equation where are your horizontal uh, diagonal and dynamic support and resistances around this area and if you feel that the uh, yen is going to strengthen then get short you think that the euro is going to get stronger if they sort out their Italy you know crisis and, um, and Brexit you know anytime soon then potentially uh, you probably want to wait for price to obviously come back into a demand zone before looking to get long euro pound and you can see that the uh, pound has strengthened somewhat or this might have been profit taking or potentially even just a stop hunt um, taking out all the stops around these swings um, I'm personally staying out of this pair as it's, they're really too unpredictable from a fundamental perspective so we have come down into this demand zone and reacted so now would be a decent time to get long uh, to get short prices did kind of pierce through this supply zone and then come straight back down so what I'm going to do is I want to move this here and I'm going to move that over here so if you do want to get short this is definitely the area to get short as uh, obviously there was um, you know the market thought that this was an expensive area and uh, you know prices sold off or a cheap area depending on which obviously currency you're buying so um, you know whatever happened on the uh, the Wednesday um, 
traders obviously thought that this was you know a, a bargain for the uh for the british pound so um it probably end up maybe being a bargain again right and again you've got uh some uh, some decent support and resistance within this this area here right you've got resistance resistance bit of support support resistance then you've got resistance here you go back a bit further maybe a bit more yep you can see it right here so this area has been used uh, been traded i should say uh several times so you can see the reaction off of you know where the previous supply zone was which is just around here it was just above there anyway but um those are your options for the euro pound aussie dollar right aussie dollar broken through these uh supply zones and i was probably expecting that to uh to actually happen as well uh markets don't go up forever or go down forever all right so we've now created a demand zone here I've got pretty much a long term one as well from way back here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that I'll re-add it again if uh, if we do you know break this zone as well but um, for now um, there is some demand here for the uh, Australian dollar and now we're seeing prices react off of this supply zone this could be just some profit taking we never know um, or it could be again a bargain to buy the, uh, the dollar if you are looking to get short you can never trade it off the daily or you can wait for you know if prices do come back up to uh this supply zone they may not but if they do then you know that that would be the uh, uh the time to trade if you're looking to get long then pretty much here is the area you have to try and get long in right if prices do come back up and you know basically take out a lot of stops which is going to be above here with a lot of stops around here um this is very obvious on a daily right um doesn't mean that you know you shouldn't necessarily get short again just means that potentially what you want to do is you know get short um you know maybe around the round number and a fresher area of supply right and this is you know the, the higher area i'll mark out the higher area this area here is definitely a fresher area of suppliers you know it hasn't been pretty much touched since around here so um that's where you'll be looking to get short if you're looking to buy the us dollar over the australian dollar um and lastly we have the australian dollar japanese yen um i actually got into this trade and got around 180 190 pips out of this uh, saying it's from last week um, if risk is on then this should want to go higher and risk was definitely on this week i think there was uh, talks of you know trump and china coming to some sort of uh, you know um um negotiation or coming to the table or whatever it was um but the the mood around this week was positive hence if you go back and look at all the uh, the yen pairs um you know the yen was uh, was quite you know we'll say quite weak but it wasn't benefiting from um um uh, from any kind of risk off environment um this week so uh managed to get decent uh, decent trade out of this and uh, i think the entry was right here it was late on the uh on the friday it was here stopped just below the low and da -da 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 -da, etc right so that was my entry right there i was expecting this uh, supply level to break anyway we had touched it a few times in fact i'll show you uh, let me go back a bit so we had touched it once twice three times and uh, when levels you know constantly touch then uh, it should get weaker and uh, i was expecting a move higher as long as we had risk um you know risk on right and if you think about this from an overall perspective this was a bargain area this was you know an expensive area when prices come back into a potential bargain area then we should see you know some um uh, uh some reaction and again it just comes down to your fundamental analysis and sentiment analysis you know buying at the absolute bargains is what we want to do brilliant risk reward um you know uh, from a risk reward perspective you're buying at the lows you know buy low sell high 
or you know sell high uh, buy low right and uh, this is what I teach in the uh, supply and demand forex um, zone course on the website um, there's a lot more that goes into you know un identifying supply and demand as well um, so uh, definitely take advantage of that if you want to take your supply and demand trading or just your trading in general to the next level so um, have I finished the analysis on this? Not yet. Let me delete it and go back to the daily time frame. Uh, so if you want to be a buyer, right, I'm going to move this here. Move that there. That's a brand new level of demand. You've got another level of demand if you're looking for a pullback. And this is the area. All right, so prices pull back. It's going to be the first area to look to get long. I like this area. For a pullback um, and then that would be obviously the second area if you're looking to get short and take advantage of potential risk on sentiment then this is going to be the first area to try to, to try to look to get uh, sorry short in and then you've got a fresher area of supply further up around this 82 50 83 round number around here so um, yeah keep your eye out on the news um, and uh, also please take advantage of the free fundamental analysis course if you have any questions just email me at info at trading180.com or you can uh, leave a comment in the uh, in the uh, section box below ask your questions there and i will you know try to get back to you as soon as possible and if you do if you know you're watching this out there um and you do want me to cover any uh, topics and if i um you know have experienced it or uh, you know traded it which i pretty much traded everything say everything but you know a lot of things anyway um uh, then I will try to make maybe a potential video um, around covering the subject um, if I know you know um, uh, um, much about it. So uh, I hope you guys found this useful. Again, please like, subscribe, share. It'd be very very helpful. And uh, I hope you have a great trading week and take care. So if you'd like to receive the best supply and demand Forex levels absolutely free, click on the link in the description box below, enter your email address and we'll send you the levels that we have just analyzed in this video. You'll get all of the major Forex currency pairs and you'll get regular updates and never miss a Forex trading opportunity.